Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This is our Q&A for June 2024, and we've got some spicy questions. Ryzen 9000 CPUs, are they dead on arrival, or should you be waiting for them over Ryzen 7000? We'll also talk about some massive GPU announcements. Is Intel Battlemage coming to save the mid-range and budget GPUs? And we'll talk about all kinds of great PC building questions, including is your DDR5 RAM about to get chucked out of the window? Remember, if you get value out of this video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference to the channel and of course subscribe click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content with that let's jump into it this video is sponsored by best buy and the new steel series arctis nova 5 gaming headset want amazing audio the nova 5 delivers premium audio quality with neodymium magnetic drivers and clearcast mic and the nova 5 provides a comfortable design with an ultra lightweight build airweave ear cushions fully customizable fit and a retractable mic select from over 100 game audio presets using the app so enemies never sneak up on you again use the nova 5 dongle or bluetooth to wirelessly connect to pc console phone or mobile device if you want premium wireless gaming audio check out the nova 5 using the link in the video description. Let's start off with where else Ryzen 9000 series CPUs, are they dead on arrival? That's what some people seem to indicate. In fact, we got tons of questions on Ryzen 9000 based on all those performance leaks that are out there right now that came out after AMD announced Ryzen 9000 series CPUs. In fact, we never gotten so many questions about single subject as we have as Ryzen 9000 performance. Let's start off with Jeremy Allen. They want to build a PC Q3 of this year. They don't want to pull any punches. Should they buy a 7800X3 or Ryzen 9000 series CPU? because they've seen some videos that Ryzen 9000 is DOA. All right, let's start off with those videos that say, yeah, Ryzen 9000 is DOA. What are they even talking about? Of course, we had AMD announce it. We did our announcement video. We went through all the details. I'll link that down in the video description. And since that time, a number of outlets like video cards and others have leaked these leaks in terms of the performance of Ryzen 9000. Now, I'll tell you this, if there are real leaks out there about Ryzen 9000, those are engineering samples, number one. There's not other kinds of samples. Those are engineering samples. You don't know what RAM they're running at. There's all kinds of caveats that I would put on that data, but what they seem to indicate is that Ryzen 9000 will not overtake the 7800X3D in gaming the way that Ryzen 7000 overtook the 5800X3D in gaming. And if you remember, the 5800X3D kind of split the difference between the Ryzen 7600X and the 7700X and the 5800X3 came right in the middle. A lot of people were, okay, that's great. I'm gonna buy an AM5, I'm gonna get a 7600X or 7700X, and that's gonna be great. I'm not gonna buy an AM4, I'm gonna go that direction instead. This time it's kind of like, well, yeah, what are we really buying if you buy a 9600X? If you're not buying a CPU that's as strong as a 7800X3D, why not spend just a little bit more money, especially if AMD does what they did last time, and price the 9600X at 299, you're gonna spend $30 more and you'll get a better CPU with the 7800X3D. That would just seem like a slam dunk. Kind of think that's why AMD is gonna keep the pricing of these CPUs a little bit more safe and sane than they did last time. Also remember with Ryzen 7000, they had to like give RAM away and stuff to, to move Ryzen 7000 at the pricing that they were trying to charge for it. Now the prices have all tumbled basically and it's a lot easier to recommend. So what does that mean for folks who wanna wait for Ryzen 9000? The other thing I would take into account, if you buy the 7800X3D, right now and you put together a system with it and you got your motherboard and everything and you're good to go, you probably won't need an upgrade in Rise in the Ryzen 9000 series generation, unless you're gonna get like a 5090. Then yes, a 9800X3D whenever that comes out. I know some people keep saying the fall, but there is reason to believe it could be 2025, the first quarter of 2025 as well. That's a long time to wait to put together a gaming PC. The good news is it's all on the AM5 platform you will be able to take out that Ryzen 7800X3D and drop in a future CPU upgrade. Now, I wouldn't necessarily tell everybody to do that. Some people, just getting a Ryzen 7600 gaming PC built together right now for around $1,000 might be a good idea because you can also drop in 9800X3D in the future and suddenly supercharge their gaming PC. And we know the X3D CPUs don't care that much about RAM speed, so I wouldn't really worry that Oh, Ryzen 7000 uses DDR5-6000, whereas you know maybe the 9700X is gonna want DDR5-8000 or some insanely expensive fast RAM, and I'll also have to replace my RAM kit, and maybe I have to get a new motherboard so I can clock it up. I wouldn't worry about any of that because the X3D C CPUs historically just really haven't cared about RAM in the same way that the regular CPUs have. So that's how I think about it right now. I would feel super comfortable telling you to put together a Ryzen 7800X3D gaming PC, but if you wanna wait, 
If you don't feel comfortable, it's gonna be like a month. It's gonna be like a month, so you can just hang tight as well. Then we've got Clint out there, who by the way is a channel member, two thumbs up to channel members. By the way, we do live stream for channel members. If you wanna become a channel member, there's a join button down there. We've got all kinds of cool perks for them. Clint asks, is Ryzen 9000 versus Ryzen 7000 kind of like 14th versus 13th gen for Intel? No. Definitely not, definitely not. This is a new generation, there are architectural improvements. 14th gen Intel was basically just 13th gen in a box that said 14th gen. It was a total, total boon doggle. We called it out at the time. We used air quotes for gen the generation. I think we've beaten Intel up enough about that. Hopefully they've gotten the message and hopefully Arrow Lake will be a lot better than what we've seen of them in the last year because I would love Intel to return to prominence because we need competition in the marketplace. We don't need single monopolies controlling everything, either the GPU space or the CPU space or anything. We need competition. So I would love to see Intel come back. That being said, Ryzen 9000 is definitely a new generation. There's a significant IPC uplift that they're claiming 16% is higher between Ryzen 7000 and 9000, what they're claiming right now, than we got between Ryzen 5000 and Ryzen 7000, where they claim 13% IPC. So that's even a bigger IPC uplift. AMD is also claiming to have made pretty dramatic cache improvements, so that may speed things up as well. Could be the DCPUs actually perform pretty well. We just, again, don't know yet. We will find out. But I definitely would not. I wouldn't quantify this as the same thing that Intel did because Intel basically just took the same CPU and stamped a different number on it and tried to sell you as a new product. That's a big no-no in my book. Let's talk some GPU announcements at Computex. The huge one was Intel Battle Mage XE2 architecture out there. There's a whole video on it. Check that out for more details on it. But let's get into some questions on it because I think these are really critical questions to understanding where the GPU market as a whole is going. We got our Ravish asked, Battle Mage basically, is it going to give us the insane performance like the ARC A750 did at the $190 price point, or is that just basically a dream? And then Dad Lily says, Battle Mage, what, where, when, meow, meow. Okay, so Battle Mage, what do we know about it right now? All we know is it's going into their next generation mobile architecture, which is the Lunar Lake architecture possibly gonna go into Arrow Lake desktop CPUs as the integrated solution as well. I would think that, right? And if we look at what Intel announced, they basically have redesigned their graphics from the ground up. From the ground up. It's one of these things where you almost have to do something initially and fail miserably at it to understand how you would have done it differently, and then you go and you do it the way you should have done it the first time, but you didn't have the information you needed in order to do it that way. That's kind of what Intel is going through right now. It's basically kind of learned by failure, and they've learned a lot through their first generation GPUs, which I actually would not classify necessarily as a failure just yet. Mr. Bear, you can't sit in front of the camera. You can sit literally anywhere else except there. Okay, Mr. Bear's abandoned me, but to wrap up basically Intel, Battle Mage, even though they're not using the term Battle Mage, the XE2 architecture looks insanely good. Now, can they scale that to a GPU that you can actually put in your PC, or is it just gonna be limited to more mobile devices? We'll have to wait and see but I could see them making significant inroads, both at the lower price point, as well as into the mid range. I think that that is where Intel should really focus. Focus on where price makes a difference and brand name makes less of a difference. This is where AMD's really been focusing, I guess, lately as well. And then build your portfolio, build out your driver library. The good thing about the XE2 architecture is you're not gonna need kind of day one drivers the way that the current Alchemist architecture does for Intel, the first generation does, these GPUs should largely be able to work with brand new games. Obviously, you're gonna want driver optimizations to get better performance, but there's so many games where without a new driver, the Intel GPUs just don't work, where that's not a problem for AMD and Nvidia. And then, of course, we do get some optimizations, which is great, but you gotta be able to work with day one in order to get recommendations from people like me and other tech tubers out there. So I think Intel's going in the right direction. I think they are gonna try and compete on price. The question of whether or not they're gonna actually launch discrete GPUs that you can put into your PC is a big one that we have heard that we should expect them around Black Friday this year, so fingers crossed. Let's jump into some more GPU questions. We got OJ7, is a 7800 XTA worthy upgrade from an RTX 3050, or should they wait for more GPU releases? This just kind of begs the question to me, how big of a GPU upgrade do you need in order to spend the money? I'd say that is a massive leap. You're basically talking about a car that is 
almost 300% faster. You're talking about going from 1080p levels of gaming. Because remember, that 3050, it's only as powerful as the GTX 1660 Super that came out in 2018, 2019, and that we used on our first build on this channel back in 2019, right? The very, very first, oh, don't watch that video. It's terrible. I can't even watch it myself. Or a card that will literally push 4K frame rates in the latest titles at super high details, at least 60 FPS. That's a massive gulf in there. And if you want 1440p, I'd consider that like a 240 hertz capable card in competitive titles at competitive settings. So yes, to me, you're spending what? $479 and you're making a massive leap up. Now, you probably wanna buy a new monitor as well. You probably not want a 1440p monitor, so you gotta got think about that as well. I would say anything that jumps you up to the resolution that you wanna be playing at, the frame rate you wanna be playing at, as long as it's not like, you know, you're going from a, like a 7700 XT to a 7800 XT, where the difference is so marginal, why would you spend like $500 to get that marginal level of difference? You're getting two to three times the level of performance you have now. I think it's well worth the money. That's kind of upgrade I think most of us wanna see, and this is like two generations ahead, right? But we would love to see in each generation. All right, Jorth asked a great question. How big of a performance uplift do you wanna see in a CPU before getting an upgrade? And then also, why don't we ever see CPU benchmarks and grand strategy tiles? We do see them, Gamers Nexus does them, but they tend to be more turn time based. So you wanna reduce the turn time, not as exciting, I think, as the FPS stuff, and also a little bit harder to do because you really have to record when the turn is done and then how much segment of time that actually took. There's a lot involved there. So I certainly understand reviewers not wanting to dump in a lot of time because FPS is typically the numbers that really drive the clicks out there, right? But your first question is huge. How big a performance uplift do you need in a CPU? And I think these next two questions really kind of flushed it out. So Walt Dam and Cavi429, they both have kind of gaming systems with a Ryzen 5000 processor, both have a 5600. One of them went from a Radeon 6600 to a Radeon 6900 XT. That's a huge upgrade, obviously. And then the other one has a 6800 XT. Wondering, should they go to the X3D CPU? So this is kind of when do you think about upgrading your CPU? To me, both those could probably use an upgrade to the CPU. The Ryzen 5600 tends to start bottlenecking right around the 7800 XT or like the RTX 4070. Remember, remember that NVIDIA GPUs require more CPU resources per FPS, basically, if you want to think about it like that, than AMD ones do. So you will get less of an uplift off those NVIDIA GPUs by dropping them in with older CPUs because they're going to eat up more of your CPU resources. You're going to be CPU bottlenecked sooner than the AMD ones. It's not a knock on NVIDIA, that's just the way it works, something you should be aware of. And when you see these benchmarks of GPUs out there, they're typically using the fastest available gaming CPUs, which either the 4900K, 3900K, or like a Ryzen 7800 X3D. And there's no CPU bottleneck there, but if you drop in some of these GPUs to like a Ryzen 5600X or a 3600X or a 2600X, right? Or a 1700X, or even go back or like an 8600K, yet you're gonna see those CPU bottlenecks hit a lot sooner and you're not gonna get the uplift you want. So then when should you think about upgrading? Number one, if you're on an Intel platform, and it's not 12, 13, 14 gen, it's probably gonna require an entire platform upgrade. So maybe the calculus for you is a little bit different because you'll need a new motherboard. You'll probably also wanna get more RAM because you probably wanna go to DDR5, like a Ryzen 7000 system. But for those of you on AM4 out there, I think the 5800X3D and the 5700X3D, the 5700X3D literally just hit $199. It's an insane value. I still want to see that you have a faster GPU. You don't want to upgrade a 5600 with a slow GPU to a 5700XD. You won't get any more FPS because at 5600, you're already getting all the FPS out of your GPU. So I want to see a bigger end GPU. Like I like the 6800 XT kind of and higher possibly. RTX 4070 and higher kind of GPUs out there. Then I would certainly drop into 5700XD at a minimum. You may even decide to spend the extra hundred bucks. I don't really think it's necessarily worth it but it is gonna be the last upgrade you ever do. So maybe if you have a little bit of extra money, do that. Otherwise, I think you're looking at a brand new platform build, especially if you're on Intel systems right now. If you're like 12, 13 gen Intel and you have like a lock CPU, I could see you going like to 13600K, really good value right now. That's where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck on a, a you know, coming up from like a 12400 or even 13400. Any of the lock CPUs have much lower performance. So that's what I would like to look for before I plunk down two or $300 on a CPU upgrade. All right, Grena asked, do I think Cam 2 modules are gonna be the future on gaming PCs or just for show? And will it disappear like SLI and Crossfire in time? Okay, well, first of all, what are we even talking about here? So 
at Computex, MSI, and I think some other motherboard manufacturers showed off these new types of these memory modules. So rather than putting in sticks of RAM, you put in this like module. And there are some benefits to doing it this way with the interconnect. I'm not gonna do a deep dive on it right now. I just want, this should be just a short answer here. But basically, it has a big hill to climb. Crossfire and SLI, by the way, they died because they couldn't feasibly get them to work. And the benefits really were questionable because all you were really trying to do is take multiple GPUs and to make it a super GPU, just get a bigger GPU was always the answer instead of putting up with the latency issues and everything else you got with that. With Camp 2, it actually kind of says it's gonna work better than traditional RAM sticks, but I think they have a big uphill battle in that RAM is not generally the place that you wanna like focus a lot of resources on in order to improve your performance. Typically, if you wanna improve your performance, get a better GPU, get a better CPU, and that's where you should spend your money. And getting these more unique motherboards right now or these kind of one-off motherboards out there, they're gonna be expensive. There's an early adopter fee to it. I just don't, it's not like OLED where it's just like so clearly better than LCD that that's the way it's going, that your early adopters are willing to spend that much more money. I don't necessarily see the benefits are that big. Now I'm open to it being good. I just, I think it's got a big hill to climb. Aussie Budget Shaver asks, are air coolers more than sufficient for a 1440p gaming rig in a hot climate like Australia? Well. This all depends. I, I hate giving you like this depends answers, but sometimes I need a little bit more information in order to give you a more definitive answer. In this particular case, what do we mean by a 1440p gaming rig? Let's just assume that we mean something like a Ryzen 7600 with like an RTX 4070 Super or like an RX 7800 XT, maybe just a 7700 XT. That's actually quite a good PC. Now for something like that, you know, you can get away with air cooling pretty simply. But if you think about it, in fact, let's just use this as our example right here. Not only do I have to get the heat away from the CPU and exit out, and obviously I've got an AIO cooler, I've got a liquid cooler on this one, and there's benefits to an AIO over uh, just a traditional air cooler, then I have to get the heat that's now in the room out of the room. So if you're saying that you're in a hot climate, number one, get air conditioning. <laughs> you're gonna need it because even if you use an AIO, if the ambient temperature is very high, the heat dissipation, the efficiency of dissipating heat out of any kind of metal, whether it be a radiator here or it be your fin stack on your air cooler, is gonna be much lower than if, it, if it's like freezing cold outside, right? Because the air differential is gonna be that much higher, so you're gonna be able to radiate that heat a lot easier. I will say liquid coolers in hot climates have a little bit of an advantage on first boot. The liquid will tend to have radiated most of the heat out. It's got more soap to it. It won't heat up as fast, but after about seven or eight minutes, it'll be very similar to an air cooler, right, in that regard, and that you've soaked up everything you can if it can't radiate heat out of here fast enough. So I would say if you're in a hot climate, get air conditioning. Even if you just have to get, hey, we lived in New York City for a while. We had those crappy kind of window units. That's just kind of how air conditioning in New York City works in, in most areas. We didn't have like central air or anything like they enjoy it in a lot of areas in the country or a lot of other places. So I would say get yourself air conditioning, number one. That's gonna help your cooler if you're not in a super hot room. Then I think there's not really that much of a difference really between air and liquid for that kind of cooling. It's all gonna come down to, do I want something that looks cool? Do I want something that's a little quieter? Then go liquid. Or do I want something that's more cost effective and cost efficient than go air? I town crier ass, am I disappointed in Homeworld 3? And, oh, I hate to say it, I am. I'm super disappointed. But, but there's a caveat here. I'm not I'm not ready to slam them just yet. So what am I talking about? Homeworld 1 and 2 are games that I played the heck out of when they came out. Homeworld Cataclysm, this is back when games came on CDs, starting in what, 1999? And then they had released Homeworld Remastered. Uh, well, I don't know, like five, 10 years ago, and I played the heck out of that thing. And I was super pumped for Homeworld 3, but they went a totally different direction with the story. Instead of telling like this grand kind of cosmic narrative, you know, you really felt like, oh, you know, like to space odyssey kind of thing. They, they just kind of drilled down into these, a handful of characters and it was like their struggles and it just felt like very generic and the dialogue was awful. It was like an AI wrote it. But here's the thing, I could forgive the bad storytelling as long as the game is fun to play. I played a lot of games where the, the story is terrible, but the game's really super fun to play. The game just wasn't fun to play. It's frustrating to try and command your fleet. The ship formations don't work half the time. The fighters won't dodge. There's just like all kinds of like 
little silly things that should have been fixed along the way. And I know this is a different developer than the one that did Homeworld Remastered. And I know I think they put it in a different engine. And I get there might be some bugs. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give them six months. I'm gonna come back. Then I'm gonna review it and I'll give it a score. But I'm not willing to beat the developer up just yet. I, a lot of games come out unfinished these days. There's a lot of pressure on these developers to get them out the door by the publishers. So I'm gonna give them some time to fix it and I'll see where it is. But right now I was pretty, pretty hugely disappointed. Remember, if you got value out of this video, give it a like, this makes a huge difference to the channel, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe, click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. Speaking of cool content, did you check out our best GPU in June, 2024? We go through all the current GPU prices. What's the best GPU at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K? Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one. Kitty.